Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Robin and this is Kara. Hi. Kara <laughs> is one of the Patreons and also one of our neat Whiskey Club members. So I've known Kara for many years now. <laughs> We're not gonna do the math. No. Uh, but Kara, do you know what Saver at Home number this is? I think we just had 90. We just had like 90. 90 something. This is 91. Ooh. Savor at home. That's a good number. Number 91. Yeah. With special guest Kara. Uh, Kara, what are we tasting tonight? Tonight, we are tasting uh, Springbank Cask Strength 12 Year. It's Correct. a Campbelltown. Campbelltown Single Malt. Yeah. So, Campbelltown is a region in Scotland. My favorite region in Scotland. This is produced by Springbank Distillery and is aged for at least 12 years. And it's bottled at cask strength, which means it's at 57.1% ABV. Produced by the Springbank Distillery and Springbank is their moderately peated two and a half times distilled malt. 100% malted barley that's fermented and then it's distilled two and a half times which means that some of it goes through a triple distillation and some of it goes through a double distillation, mm. kind of. It's a little bit more of a complicated process. And I will insert the actual like diagram of how Springbank is distilled right here. But they also produce long grow and hazel burn long grow is their heavily peated malt that's double distilled and hazel burn is their unpeated malt that's triple distilled so spring bank kind of sits in between hazel burn mm -hmm. and long grow what's the flavor difference between a double and a triple distilled so a double and a triple distillation would just mean a little bit more refinement for the triple distillation. So every time you distill, you get a little bit more pure of a spirit, which just means there's more refinement there. But, and refinement can kind of mean whatever the distiller wants it to mean. Now, how many distilleries are there in the Campbelltown region? Only three. Only three oh distilleries gosh. in the Campbelltown region. So there's Springbank, there's the Glengyle Distillery, which is kind of the sister distillery to Springbank, and they produce the Kilkiran line. Mm. Um, highly recommend checking out Kilkiran. They are also really delicious, and they do a variety of, of peated malts. Um, they're kind of like base peated malt is also pretty lightly peated like Springbank, but they also have a heavily peated as well. And that kind of comes out seasonally and they do a lot more of these experimental releases. And then there's Glen Scotia and Glen Scotia is kind of doing a rebrand and revamp and they are developing into a really, really cool, really delicious distillery that also does unpeated and peated malts. And I think there's talk of two more distilleries being built in the Campbelltown Ooh. region. So they're working on a little bit of a resurgence there. And they have the Campbelltown Malts Festival every year. So Campbelltown's blowing up. Campbelltown's, yeah. They used to have like one of the highest densities of distilleries in all of Scotland because they're such a tiny little peninsula. And there were like somewhere around 30 distilleries there at one time. And then the 80s was pretty hard for Scotland in general. And a lot of those distilleries closed down. Yep. I think even the Glen Gyle shut down for a while. Now I've had this bottle for a while, so I have no idea what it retails for anymore. Um, at the time, I think it was like around $100, but I don't know that you can find it anymore. So anyways. Are you ready to taste? I'm ready. Great. Let's okay. do it. All right. Kara has an amazing palette, by the way, guys. Oh, so I don't know. She's, that. yes. I love the smell of this. It definitely has that sweet peat Campbelltown funk. And I need to specify what Campbelltown funk is, right? If you, the viewer, have never had anything from Springbank or from the Campbelltown region, it's like, what is Campbelltown funk? And so for me, that's a little bit of this funky fruitiness. Um, 
I get a little bit more of like a caramel and honey and apple thing, but then it has some like oiliness um, and that, yeah, is what makes it a little bit more funky, I think, is that kind of like oily, a little bit greasy thing. Mm -hmm. But like not greasy in a bad way, like greasy in, you know, like a greasy, buttery thing. It's hard to describe the oiliness. but It's, it's hard there. to describe, right, like why, how would you be able to smell oiliness, but yeah. Yeah, it's definitely got like um, rotten apple. Mm-hmm. Not not bad, but yeah, fermented, funky, yep. but still has that like strong sweet note mm -hmm. to it. I feel like the oiliness is almost like like a sesame oil because there's like a little bit of nuttiness there too, mm. but it's not peanuts or anything like yeah. that. But it's almost like sesame. With Springbank, like. I don't think that the peat smacks you in the face at all. For me, like the first thing that I get is more of that like oily fruitiness and then you kind of have to hunt a little bit for the peat. There's definitely like, I'm getting some maple syrup too. The more I nose this, the more I get some like more of those sweet the, notes. Like the, the rich mm -hmm. sweet notes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely like a little caramel. Mm. It still retains its like sweet note mm -hmm. on the on the palate. It definitely does. It definitely has that sweetness right off the bat. The fruitiness, so it's like syrupy fruits, but it's still almost like I don't know, like apple pie filling, like stewed fruits, and there's a little bit of spiciness yeah, there a too. Spice. Mm -hmm. A little bit of some cinnamon and clove and then I feel like in the finish is where you start to get that smokiness where it's like oh maybe those stewed fruits were actually grilled first before being stewed a little bit of that roastiness yeah. and some bitter chocolate the really light um mm -hmm. smokiness at the end mm -hmm. and I get more of like a wet moss mm -hmm. like a kind of a fresher note from the peat mm -hmm. as well not just smoke. I have to say, it is not as drying as a cask strength usually is. Mm -hmm. For 57.1, <laughs> the heat is not too bad. Mm -hmm. You know I do love a cask strength whiskey, so this is very nice. Um, I think maybe the high ABV and the heat from that like balances the sweetness mm -hmm. nicely. Mm -hmm. It might be a little more syrupy if it wasn't so high strength. Could be. Now, I would highly recommend picking up literally any spring bank that you can get your hands All on. All of it. <laughs> uh, but that's because I am completely biased and love everything that comes out of spring bank. They do a really good job, but they are now becoming harder to find in the US at least unfortunately or if you can find it it is really marked up it's delicious delicious all right guys if you enjoyed this video make sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and leave us a comment down below and share this video with your friends and okay. of course maybe you can be in a video well next time. i think if you're a patreon you definitely too. could. Yes. So shout out to the Patreons. Thank That's you guys right. so much for helping to support the channel. Thank you, Kara. Thanks for having me, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and if you would also like to hopefully one day be featured in a Savor at Home tasting, you've got to be a Patreon, of course. I mean, if you, you, you would it. like to support the channel, I've got a link in the description below where you can join us over on Patreon. And the highest density of distilleries is like Highlands space is right? now in the space side region. Mm. Mm -hmm. There's 50 something in the space side region. Mm. And that's the little sub region of the Highlands. Did they make it through the eighties better than the other regions? -ish? I think all of or Scotland everyone? was kind of negatively impacted. Yeah. By the whiskey lock of the eighties. Whiskey lock. Or it was like the seventies. Yeah. Lock. Yeah. And then the distilleries closed in the eighties. Yeah. The mm. whiskey lock. 
Take a little nose break. So a little trick. Oh yeah, the elbow trick. The elbow trick 